This, ladies and gentlemen, is the happy hour on SBNation.com. If you're looking for Dan Rubenstein, he is traveling this week. Joining me is Nick Stevens. Good afternoon, sir, and how are you? Good. It's kind of an upgrade. I'm not going to lie. Dan's not watching, so I can say that. I'm not going to lie either. All right. Um, he's at Jazz Fest, by the way. Have you? He's at Jazz Fest? Yes. Get out. Yes. Is he doing SB Nation related uh, research and sports fair? Or no, is he I, just... I think he's just he's just getting fat. He's just eating and uh, uh, doing a little bit of drinking. He doesn't he doesn't drink that much. No, I just pro- he doesn't strike me as a drinker. No, no, no. Unlike Sousenstein and Drinkowitz over here, yes. who look for any occasion to professionally imbibe. <laughs> uh, I just told you 30 seconds ago that I'm not going to lie, so I won't. Okay, please don't. I don't want any lie. This is a lie-free half hour of sports <laughs> internet radio. That just sounds so delightful. <laughs> uh, I would rather be at uh, Jazz Fest. This is a terrific place to be. It really is. It's it a is. wonderful place. I mean, it's gorgeous. We've got like the makings of a terrific porn set behind us there with the fake brick walls and the fern and the, yeah. and the, the and chairs. And a beautiful spring day in New York City. And we're indoors. Would rather not be here. Nope. Would much rather be in the middle of a giant stinking dirt field in New Orleans eating $7.50 crawfish bread with freshly poured abita. And watching Fleetwood Mac is what I was going to (laughs) say. They're playing this weekend. Are they really? Yeah. Now, now... Would you now? Would you consider doing? Uh, who's the one? Uh, would you would you t- go full Stevie Nicks if you were going to go to a Fleetwood Mac show? Yes. Cocaine in the back door. Oh, I was just talking <laughs> about wearing a lot of scarves and flowing <laughs> flowy gowns. But yeah, sure. I'd have I'd have some gas on me too. Yeah, you'd go. Yeah, you'd, you'd go back door cocaine. <laughs> well, you got to put it somewhere. <laughs> That's a good horse name, by the way. <laughs> As a segue. Yeah, we'll we'll get to uh, we got the it's a big uh, Derby weekend coming up, uh, and we'll get to that. Uh, yeah. But uh, first, I want to take you were you have once again interviewed a bunch of fans of the NFL draft that was last weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, something that you've done for a couple of years now. I think we uh, let's uh, can we roll a little bit of a clip. Mm-hmm. The Ravens finally got past the Pats, and this guy's got nothing to say. We got a ring. I don't care what happens for the next 10 years. That's the way you do it. See, that's the way. Are you looking forward to that day? Wait, you're a Jets fan. You, that's never going to happen. <laughs> LOLZ. In a time when we need unity in this country more than ever, would you believe we'd be brought together by, of all things, the butt fumble? Butt fumble! Butt fumble! What'd you say when you saw my shirt? Butt fumble. <laughs> I need to make this shirt electronic, so when you press the logo, that laugh comes up every time. <laughs> it never gets old. Butt fumble. Yeah, that's right. Butt fumble USA. If there's one thing we can all agree on, it's a good butt fumble. This never. Gets old. <laughs> so yeah. Butt fumble of, USA, right? It's uh, it plays well to the, the crowd. It does. And it's uh, fun to say. It is fun to say. Butt fumble. Butt fumble. I wonder who who first called it. Did Twitter deem it the butt fumble that night, or is this a name that's evolved? It Immediately. Was, it, was, it was the butt fumble from, from, from day one, from, from second one. Were you watching live when that happened? I was. It was like... It was magic. It was. I've been trying to get um, uh, the, the guard who, who created that, that butt fumble. I forget the name. Brandon Moore. Moore. Brandon Moore. I'm trying to get him on offside so that we could have just a half hour of butt fumble discussion. That would make the best ever. Like, see, all of your major sports media outlets will not do a half an hour where you get to go behind the butt fumble with Matt Ufford. <laughs> behind the butt fumble. But this is what's so great about SB Nation. I'd love to come back on the show. Thanks. Uh, this is what's so great is you can go behind the butt fumble. You and Brandon Moore. A six pack and a half an hour discussing what it felt like. First, he feels, you know, the, the backdoor action, and then he <laughs> realizes his quarterback screwed up the play and literally ran into his ass <laughs> and created the greatest blooper in all football history. It was fantastic. It was there was none more Jets than anything ever that we've ever seen. Later on in the video, um, if anyone, if if anyone goes back to watch it, uh, the website that I do, all my, the Boston sports comedy stuff is called townynews.com um, under the guise of the character Fitzy. Of course. Otherwise known just as a just character. a shell and a name for enabling my bad habits, drinkery and whatnot. But uh, I ran into Artie Lang on the street and asked him I if see, I could. Yeah, yeah, I saw the video. It was good. Yes. Uh, best YouTube comment, by the way, that anyone posted about seeing Artie Lang in the video was, did Artie Lang die and no one told him four <laughs> years ago? <laughs> That's a- that's accurate and also might be true. Yeah, that uh, m- yeah he may just be coasting on fumes. He hasn't made a lot of good health decisions in his life. No, no, he looks he looks like fifteen pounds of blank stuffed into a five pound bag. Um, but I asked him like, is there anything greater from 
the most recent year of the NFL than the butt fumble. And he basically said, like, no, that actually summarizes the 45 years of the Jets perfectly. Like, if there was one play when you thought of the New York Jets, even though they have a Super Bowl championship. It's like, it's like Joe Namath and pantyhose and the butt fumble. Exactly. It, that's, that's the New York Jets for you. Joe Namath and pantyhose. The, the, you think of two things. Him waving the fingers, they walk off having won Super Bowl three. Yeah. And the butt fumble. There you go. The ultimate high and the ultimate low. It's so, <laughs> so perfect. Um, we walked into the draft last week, and I've done that for a couple of years, and we were thinking... Yeah, I was, I was, I was going to ask, how many, how many years have you done that now? Because I, I always remember seeing mm -hmm. your, your, the videos come out. Yeah, and I saw you guys, you and Dan last year yep. at the draft. You yep. guys did that great piece where you, Dan was outside. And I had, like, the VIP treatment inside. I, was, I, like, got, I got the better side of that video. You totally did. You totally did with the, the fancy RG3 socks and everything else. It was awesome. Um... So that's seven years we've done that, and wow. it's a little repetitive now because you see the same characters and there's a lot of the same nonsense. But this year, just by wearing that T-shirt that we made and we sell for like 10 bucks, people just On saw that. News. On townynews.com. plus $3 shipping and handling. <laughs> we, it just erupted. Like People saw that shirt and just took to it, and that became the theme of the video. I thought I needed to go there as an ambassador of Boston and do hashtag Boston Strong work. Nope. No one cared. No. Nope. Just butt, butt fumble. fumble. Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk, you know, that, the, the whole syndicate. He, he, is, saw, he is almost, he's a very convincing cyborg. <laughs> he, he is. Would, would it not surprise you if he were a member of the collective? <laughs> like maybe, I would not be surprised. Would it surprise you if he flew to and from work in a cube? His hair is not actually hair. It's, it's just a, it's a plastic mold, a la Ken doll. It's like a, it's like a, it's a brain, it's a brain helmet that it it's, actually covers. It comes off, it comes off at the end of the night, and then in the morning he's... <laughs> Puts it back on. Like, remember when you saw Empire Strikes Back the first time you saw Vader's helmet being lowered on top yeah, of his, that's, like, that's gnarly man Mike brain? Mike Florio's hair. That's Mike Florio's hair. <laughs> Mike Florio's hair, also a great name for a fake tumbler. Um, Please continue. So Florio just saw me walking by, and, like, even the sports media was like, nice shirt. <laughs> it was perfect. There you go. It was great. Um, are we, have we satisfied our draft needs, our, our draft talk? By and large, you were happy with how your team did? It was a fun weekend? It, it was, was. It was, was football in April, I'm right? I'm pleased. I think we, uh, we we broke down the draft enough uh, mm -hmm. on last week's uh, midnight happy hour. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need to get in too much of it. Are you mm -hmm. watching uh, NBA playoffs at all? Big time. Big time? We've got a game six tonight, my friend. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I was, I'm was i a Nets fan. Mm -hmm. I was watching last night's uh, the Nets versus uh, the, Oregon, the Oregon Trail of death that, the, that is the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> like four the of them Oregon have, Trail of Four death. of them have dysentery. Uh, That's L right. Luol Deng has scarlet fever. Yep. Um, and uh, poor Kirk Heinrich and his polio. Polio. It's so sad. And uh, whooping cough is Derek Rose is why he's not on the court. Right. You should get your children vaccinated. They're, yeah. It's going to be a tough game seven for the Bulls. Uh, we wish them uh, uh, a painless death. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're Derek Rose list. They know they're not going anywhere. Just the same. And the way. Nets aren't either. Like, like no. the, the, I said it today in uh, today's upcoming daily win video that, that the, the Heat are going to win round two in, in three games. They should. Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, the Nets or Bulls, whoever ends up getting out of uh, a round two, dead. Has They're there dead. ever been any consideration, you think, in any round of any playoff format in any of the major four sports where the odds are so stacked against you, and I know on any given Sunday, and yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. they play the games, why not just seed the round and just everyone take a couple days? I think that'd be nice. And then they can just show, like, the footage footage of uh, the, the guys kicking back and drinking beers. Yeah, or they could just run behind the butt fumble hey. or whatever works. <laughs> All right, listen, Bulls slash, <laughs> Bulls slash Nets, you're going to seed the round to the Heat, yep. and every two days the Heat will do a Google Hangout, and you can ask them questions Sounds for like fun. two and a half hours. <laughs> And the same amount of people will show up <laughs> probably a quarter and a half late, just like they do in Miami. <laughs> there will be there will be more surprises during that than there would be during a, uh, a Heat Bulls or Heat Nets series. Seven and a seven point lead at the half. LeBron expands it to fifteen by the end of the third quarter. All of us become disinterested. Then we start flipping back and forth between CNN, Comedy Central, and the Food Network, looking for something to watch. And we're all asleep with a beer in hand at ten thirty five on the sofa. Uh, it's a living. It's a living. It's yeah. a life. Um, there's a there's a basketball place. Also, I want to say that I'm I'm uh, repping the uh, the top dog of, of Berkeley, California today to uh, to shout out to the East Bay fans and the the big win for the Dubs in six nice. over that the Nugs. Was big last night. Huge. There is a uh, there's a video on SBNation.com of Steph Curry mm -hmm. hit 51 shots throughout the course of that six game series. And that's just a nine minute video of all the shots he made. I watched all nine minutes. 
It's basket porn. It's it is it is. I just I was just eating eating lunch, just eating a sandwich, and just and and just staring at shot after shot of r- ridiculous, ill-advised, falling away three pointers, step back, splash, which he time. makes effortlessly. So so easy. Might be one of the five doesn't play for my team that I enjoy watching and rooting for basketball players that easily. I enjoy watching easily that I could root for easily. He's, he's a, a lot of fun. He's to watch. on a fast break and he'll be like, I don't feel like shooting a layup, and he'll just pull up and like shoot shoot from the free throw line instead of like taking it to the defender. And it's it's as much a given as a layup or a dunk for him. He's he's the guy who, when all the snipers go to the roof, like the Sarge doesn't have to tell him, like give him permission, like he can always take the shot because no, you yeah. know he's gonna make. Like, yeah. Somehow, even if he misses wildly, it'll still ricochet and Pull hit the, the target. Trigger. Yes, yeah. absolutely. He's got the green. You have the green light. Um, <laughs> that was a heck of a win by the the Warriors, by the way. Incredible. I, I thought Denver might actually be a team that could surprise OKC. That's what everybody thought. Um. And then the, yeah. then the Nuggets didn't really play defense for a couple games. And uh, uh, and the, the thing is, the Warriors got better without David Lee. Which is weird. Which is weird. But Mark Jackson, speaking to the guys, there was some highlight reel I was watching of the playoff to date this morning. And Mark Jackson, and this makes you think, like, what does it take to be uh, respected by your team? What does it take to be a leader of men? And I think a lot of these former players that are now coaches who can speak to them Man to man on their level. Mark Jackson was sitting there. He wasn't doing coach speak with like, these are a bunch of shapes. They're on a board. <laughs> Follow this pattern or forget it because most of you are dumb, but you're good at shooting the basketball. <laughs> Mark Jackson just sat there and was just like, I'm jealous. I am jealous. You are doing what I used to do and I love it. I want to be out there with you. What you're doing, you're making me jealous. And I bet all those guys were like, Let's go make Coach proud. <laughs> Just I'm going to run through a brick wall or a long-haired Denver Nugget right now. <laughs> um, let's move things on to the, to the big topic of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Kentucky Derby weekend. On a very interesting – well, it often, they often intersect. Kentucky Derby with Cinco de Mayo. Well, it's, it's like uh, – it's, I feel like it's New Year's Eve for casual drinkers. Like, like I'm out there – we're out there every day like slinging back drinks – and the people showing up don't drink their bourbon every single day, mm-hmm. dabble in their mint juleps, amateurs. Right. And then on Cinco de Mayo, same thing with tequila. There's mm-hmm. a bunch of people who aren't out there, aren't out there destroying their liver every single day, just going at it one day out of 365. Right. I'm going to have a bunch of tequila and regret it. No. No, we're out there every day digging ditches in our liver. <laughs> uh, you know what you can find? Um, and I bet a lot of people in other cities can find this too, but especially in New York, because it's just so rampantly celebrated. Go to your grocery store and tomorrow try to buy mint, and Sunday try to buy limes or Corona or Pacifico. Oh, yeah, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. You're not going to find any of it because every D hole has found his way to the grocery <laughs> room and be like, I'm um, totes going to a roofer later on. We're doing Derby de Mayo. Hashtag winning. And uh, you and I are both just like, Break it and like, or just like, like Charles Bronson's quarter, like sock full of quarters, and we just want to beat them death wish style because they're the people that make these seasonally j- joyous holidays that professional drinkers like us enjoy. Yeah, the same people, the same people who host Mad Men parties where everybody dresses up in a suit from the '60s are the same ones who host Kentucky Derby parties, and the women show up in big hats and the guys wear Sears sucker shoots, shoots, <laughs> suits. Gosh. Have you ever, th- just even saying that those people get together and have those madman parties, have you ever wished you just stumbled across a box of flash grenades and you could just <laughs> toss them in a room more? <laughs> Spoiler alert, tonight's not going to end well for you guys. <laughs> Sterling Cooper Draper, go F yourself. Honestly, <laughs> they're just th- that's just the worst. And somebody this weekend is going to do it. They're going to insult the double holiday that is this glorious sports weekend with Cinco de Mayo and the Derby and all these playoffs, and they're going to be like, hey, brah, guess what? I took Cinco de Mayo and the Derbs, and um, it's a mint julep with uh, tequila. It's oh, like, it's God. boss. The per- like just They already have that. It's called a caipirinha. Exact- Thank you. Brazil did or that. Or mojito. Mojito. Caipirinha's with rum, I think. Uh, sorry, dude. When I'm having mo's with my friends, we call them brojitos. More people that should be macheted at the kneecap. Let's work on that list after the show. <laughs> that's that's a, that's a show unto itself. Um, let's let's talk about horses. Can we, in order to get us properly in the mood, we've put together uh, some Kentucky Derby highlights. Mm-hmm. Can we can we roll those some some great times throughout the years? Next 
Satan, stay out of my way. <laughs> Somebody's got more balls than brains, I see. You think I'm too... <coughs> oh, you think I'm a joke? <laughs> <laughs> That's that was Secretariat knifing a man. It was. That was 1973 when Secretariat knifed a man, and that's why he's in the Horse Racing Hall of Fame. Now, see, I thought that was um, what was it? Take it in the brown, um, the uh, the the brown. What was the name of the the last horse that actually had a shot at the Triple Crown? And then was it Brown Ticket, Brown Paper Bag? Uh, uh, you're asking. You're asking the wrong. You know person. what I mean, though. A couple years sure, ago at the Belmont, sure. there was a horse, Big Brown. That's it. Big Brown. The one, Big with, brown. The one with the hooves. Got yes, you. The, yeah. the hooves. Long hair. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, guy with a horse face walks into a bar. <laughs> <Long> right. <nose. laughs> uh, I was at the Belmont a couple of years ago because I just, you know, it's, it's a 30 minute train ride sure. from New York City. Everybody should definitely do it, by the way, if you get a chance. Just take the train out there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's $10 beers all day long, but it, only, it used to only cost two bucks to get in there. Really? General admission is 20 now. That's preposterous. Yeah, because they realize that the internet generation, people that are like, I already got plans to go to Great Guga Mooga. Now I got to figure out what else to do. They go out to the horse race. Uh, it's a ton of fun. But um, that was, it was so disappointing because everyone was looking forward to maybe like being able to say, like, I was there. I watched a Triple Crown winner. And the horse just got smoked. And then I was like, this is actually kind of boring. Just watching <laughs> horses run around in a big circle. Well, that's, you weren't gambling on it, were you? I mean, I bet like 10 bucks. Well, you got you to gotta make, that's what makes, that's what makes sports fun is gambling on it. When you're like, I need this, that's right. the, then you get that adrenaline rush. That's what makes it fun. But I grew up the son of a gambler, so therefore I'm Ooh. trying to break. We're, now we're. I don't mean to get a little too. The more you grow on, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to break the cycle. Now. I got you. I got, sorry, <laughs> he says I, as he takes another sip of beer. <laughs> uh, break exactly. that, break that cycle. Uh, too bad. And I also have two online sites I use. It's fine. Uh, some of us at SB Nation, Spencer Hall, John Boys, myself, are, are kind of fascinated with making up uh, horse names or like bad names for horses. Right. Uh, Spencer and John and, and Martin Rickman came up with a, with a list of, of the worst possible horse names. Mm -hmm. uh, among them are um, C. Triscuit. Love it. Uh, Neck Tat Terriot. Mm -hmm. Malcolm Gladwell in concert. <laughs> Coin Star. <laughs> That's fantastic. <fair. laughs> I would go see slash absolutely put my money on Malcolm Gladwell and Con. That makes no sense. <laughs> Ron Paul Stiltskin. <laughs> um, stupid. And well, horse names are stupid. We yeah. got a, we got a horse named Orb this year. Yep. Um, oh, who else have we got? There's Giant Finish. Normandy Invasion. I wonder if the jockey is Peter North on Giant Finish. <laughs> Sorry. That's e that was easy, but I laughed anyway. I know. Come you know. I know. It was it was just there. I'm sorry. That's what somebody said oh come on Ugh. there's lines of battle it's my lucky day these aren't even like like none of these are it's even my lucky day is the name of a horse in a in a movie about horse racing that right. is that that doesn't even know or no. it, it's you know what it is it's the um early in the second act like title song that is sung by the lead character in a broadway musical written in 1947 about yes. horse racing like it's my lucky day it's it's the name of a horse uh predating uh irony basically exactly well, oh you mean when america was fun <laughs> before we ruined everything with irony uh well you know w along with irony we can't, we got a lot of uh equal rights that we didn't have you know fair point yeah Fair point. I still say women I, can vote now, that sort of thing. I don't know. I'd go for an irony free America. How much better is America with irony but female members at Augusta? You make uh, the call. I I kind of like irony. I kind of uh, have built a career out of it, so I'm going to have to to I know. Back it up. Yeah. Here I am looking the gift horse in the mouth, yeah. not to not gift to cross. horse gift horse would be another another good horse name. Yeah, like these aren't even like none of the Kentucky Derby names are creative at all this year. There's not any one name that like you know, I would just say, like, that's cool. I'm going to put $4 on him, or I'm going to do a box or a Quinella with him. That's right. I've been to the track often enough to know all these terms. Uh, but, uh, like, there's nothing here where your wife might go, like, oh, that's fun. I like that color, or that reminds me of my dorm. Isn't there a horse named Revolution this year? Revolutionary. Revolutionary. Right. Nah. Nothing. Overanalyze. Seriously? Charming Kitten. Charming Kitten, I would put 20 bucks on. Right, because you and I have both blown a lot of singles there in Tampa. <laughs> uh, charming Kitten. Now, speaking of Charming Kittens, that makes me think of um, the like when you come up with horse names, 
Um, I want. I would love to know. We were talking about this before the show. Like, how does anybody come up with a horse name? Is it just like a friend or a family member? Is it just like a fun, like you know, Malut, uh, Golden Sense? Who knows how they come up with these names? Got me thinking about the whole idea of like we were talking about um, how you come up with your funny porn name. You take sure, sure. Uh, pet's name and the f- first street you lived on, or, right. or your middle name and the first street you lived on. So yeah, that would be for you. That would be uh, Clayton Quail. That, that's a strong porn name. I think so. Yeah, it's it's a little bit executive. Yeah, but definitely late seventies. Yeah, yeah, that's out of focus VHS strong right there. That's <laughs> nice work. I'll grow it out. <laughs> See, I'm Snuffy Faxon. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> porn names should not have the word snuff in them. <laughs> Just don't have many rules. <laughs> I live with. Aside from all the ones that the co- the basketball coach from Teen Wolf taught us. He's in a lot of illegal movies. Yeah, he's in a lot of ones that are projected on 8mm. <laughs> Cut to George C. Scott. Turn it off. Um, so I was thinking a couple of fun formulas maybe for coming up with uh, more entertaining horse names might okay. be. Here's one. Uh, pick your favorite Bond movie and your first grade teacher's last name. I have... N- uh, okay. Um, I never say... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, can't even think of a <laughs> Skyfall Qualheim. <laughs> Why would you not put money on that horse? <laughs> come on, uh, come on, Octopussy Foley. Octopussy Foley. Could you All get right. behind that? Uh, yeah. Just, just. I mean, like Octopussy in general. It's just Octopussy in general. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about another one? Uh, your favorite superhero and a stereotypical Irish last name. <laughs> Batman O'Shea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's no chance Aquaman O'Houlihan. I'm not laying 50 to win. Win, place, and show. Just saying. <laughs> what was yours again? <laughs> Batman O'Shea. <laughs> if we make the money that we think we deserve to make in this life, we're definitely opening up a bar called Batman O'Shea. <laughs> Superman McKendry. <laughs> I would put money on that horse. That's a good one. Iron Man O'Toole. <laughs> See, it, it doesn't get old, right? No, right, it really right. does not. That, that one works. All right, we're going to keep that one. How about um, your favorite street food and your first girlfriend's last name? Ooh. Taco Fontenot. <laughs> <laughs> Batman O'Shea and Taco Fontenot. They're, <laughs> they're in the box. <laughs> oh, my God. I can do this. That's fantastic. That, we just came up. These are, this is show prep right here. We, you kids at home, show prep. Hey, um, for anybody who happens to be listening, please take these suggestions and uh, drop horse names into the comments using uh, superhero plus Irish name Yep. and street food plus your first girlfriend's last name. Just litter the comment section with these, please, because... Uh, I could read these all day. My God. They're exactly. Oh, I, there, there could not be Hawkeye enough. McDonough, I'm without a doubt putting money on. <laughs> and a last one, just for fun. Maybe if we can complete the, if we can go for the, uh, the win place and show. Take your favorite '80s pop star, and then have them be possessive of a health and beauty product. Oh, um, okay. Hold on a second. Madonna's shampoo. <laughs> Why not Rod Stewart's deodorant? Wham's conditioner. <laughs> Wham's conditioner. Uh, g- Laura Brandigan. Laura Brandigan's hair curling iron. Okay, okay. I probably should have stopped at the uh, beloved street food and first girlfriend's yeah, last name. That's all right. Okay, all right. two out of four ain't bad. No, it really I batted is. 500. That's better than uh, every single baseball player in history. It's not bad, right? No, no, it's, it's not bad at all. I rod carooed this in the middle of the game, but I stepped to the plate one too many times. It's okay. It's you the story know, of my life. You gotta leave on the high note sometimes. Um, <clears throat> also, I wanna point out uh, another, one more thing that, that, that I like to do with, mm-hmm. with horse names. And that's to go with the uh, horse-related pun. Um, mm. So uh, we were talking about this a little bit on Twitter, and uh, my friend Brendan Darby s- mentioned uh, Winnie Cooper. I like that. Um, uh, the 8-Bit Life hit me up on Twitter to say uh, John Benet Ramsey. Doesn't get old. No, uh, I like those. And, uh, you know, there's the classic. This is a real horse was mm-hmm. uh, hoof-arted. Oh, so nice. The, the, and the, in, in the call. The, the the excitement call the exciting call as uh, hoofarted came around came came <laughs> around the bend it's hoofarted. How about uh, the princess bridal? That was terrible. Oh, can we build a time machine so I can go back eight <laughs> seconds and take that back? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> How about Main Street? See, because they call their hair uh, 
Uh, uh, uh, no, but Princess Bridal's good. Like, like that's that's uh, that's me patting you on the knee. What um, if what if we do a horse term and a snack? How about um, <laughs> chomping at the brittle? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I peaked at beloved street food. I should have signed off and just hung out as you let's wrapped just, up. Let's the just show. go back to that one. Um, <laughs> we should. Uh, Cuban sandwich Johnson. You get Cuban sandwiches off the street? Uh, out of a food truck. Oh, there's, fair enough. That's street food. There's an active, active uh, food truck culture in our native Brooklyn. Yes, there is, as well here in Midtown, uh, 46th Street. Native native isn't the right word. I believe adopted is, is more correct. I, don't I think, think they prefer first people now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, tell me, like, you don't want to hang out with Hot Dog Sullivan? Hot Dog Sullivan's... It that's... just sounds like a cool guy or a great horse. A great horse. Hey, uh, hey, Matt, what time are we meeting down the bar? Around 9.30. Who's coming? Oh, we got Dan, we got Nick, we got Mike, Beaner, and everyone else. Oh, and Hot Dog Sullivan's coming by. <laughs> we actually do have a man named Bean here. Which is why I went that way. Yeah. Guys, it's okay. You can cross. Those are awesome pants. You know, you could that guy could green screen his lower anatomy out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got um, the, uh, the Verge especially has... Uh, mm -hmm has people with the, the cutting edge of fashion uh, upstairs on the ninth floor. Uh, here in sports land, it's yes. just T-shirts and, and hoodies, and you looking all good and, and outdressing me today. I, I, this was very, I, I, I kind of overkilled it today. I've I been I, – I usually try to mix things up where, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll have like a fun T-shirt two or three days a week and mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, a cardigan day and then – Mix it up with a nice shirt, sometimes even a tie, just so people right. don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And what's happened recently is I've gotten clean laundry back, and I have not felt like ironing a shirt in, mm -hmm. in like three weeks. I'm on like on a three week span of, of like no iron shirts, and I've got like five shirts that I haven't worn in a month, and I'm just like, I do not feel like ironing. Not I gonna have happen. No interest whatsoever nope. in ironing. T shirt it is. Yeah, exactly. Right. T shirt and a hoodie. That's. Yep. I think that's exactly how the mid to late thirties blogger actor. New dad, Brooklyn-based, work in Manhattan, cool T-shirt and a and an overpriced hoodie movement began because people just ironing socks. Let's just be honest. Oh my God, it's the worst. worst. It really is. I don't mean to sound like I don't mean to get my grouse on, but ironing absolutely sucks. I would highly recommend watching enough late night TV to find your favorite handheld steamer. Uh, also, handheld steamer is uh, running out of box 14 this, th this Saturday <laughs> at Churchill Downs. Uh, and the there, down the stretch, there's Matt Offord's favorite horse, handheld steamer, coming in the lead. Um, yeah, I would highly recommend the handheld steamer. The Here's a question I just wanted to ask you. Like, is this, um, is this the best sports time of the year? I will say no, just because there's no football. I knew, God. Now, see, I should have gone to the paramutual and put fifty on that because I knew that's what you were going to say. Yeah, you know, it's it's I I can't uh, I can't get behind it. Just, I, I love the NBA playoffs, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm not a hockey guy. I don't, I don't have a right. hockey team. Mm -hmm. uh, and and baseball at the beginning of the season, it's it's lost that uh, that new baseball season smell. Mm -hmm. um, you know where it's 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 the the novelty's worn off already. So right. it, I, it's that time of the year where I like to go to a baseball game because it's starting to be nice weather, but. Mm -hmm. I'm not super passionate about uh, the games happening. So it's like NBA playoffs, and yeah, that's it for me. Right. And then there's the occasional certain something like the Derby this weekend. Uh, sure. There's a Floyd Mayweather fight on. There seem to be more boxing matches. Yes. Good fight tomorrow night. There is a UFC event every 30 minutes now. Yes. yes. Interesting how Dana U White was able to line that up. UFC 2372 starts in 10 minutes. Ronda Rousey versus someone guaranteed to regret fighting Ronda <laughs> Rousey. UFC 3075 tonight, 59.95, only available on PPV. Yeah. Uh, why would why would anyone fight her? Um, I it, I certainly wouldn't. Would not at all. Um, would not. Couldn't pay me enough. No, your arm would be broken in two minutes or less. You give me two minutes. <laughs> you th so that means you think I could basically outrun her in the octagon <laughs> for 120 seconds till she because it's one second. Just chicken wing. Just oh, mommy. That's all it's gonna take. Yeah. Um, it's. I think this is a good sports time of the year. I was it's, just thinking on the way into the studio good. today. Like this is kind of fun. There was the draft. There are the fights coming up. There's the derby. There's the entirety of the triple crown. The baseball is in full swing, like you said. Yeah, the, it new, is. the new baseball smell is like it doesn't smell like leather and cracker jacks and stale beer anymore. It's just baseball. Yep. Fun to go. Not so much fun to talk and watch about. Talk about and watch whatever. Yeah, you know. Not a hockey guy either. And, and it's a, a great time. I recognize that the NHL playoffs, the Stanley Cup playoffs, excuse me, please don't lynch me, hockey fans. <laughs> 
for saying NHL playoffs when it's the Stanley Cup playoffs. You freaks, this is why we hate you. Um, Bold statement, I'm behind you. <laughs> but, but I recognize that the Stanley Cup playoffs is a, is a fantastic... Who's best at football? <sighs> Who's the best at football? I don't know, actually. I'm not sure if there's really a top dog we play-by-play. Are... You're a big Aikman fan, aren't you, Matt? <laughs> uh, eh, no. Um, Do I smell an inside joke? I, I'm just, I just went along with it. Oh, nice work! Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you led me astray there. No, follow the popcorn right. trail. No, I just uh, that was that was polite laughter for Will, but because uh, he, he Will usually chime in with, with such good stuff. Where you been, buddy? Will, are you still there? It's a busy day. It's oh, a busy okay. day yeah. back here. He's he's getting high in the. It's back nice to know you're there, though. Yeah, it is. The voice of God. I don't know who the best football player, but you know, I kind of like. I do. I do. I'm starting to enjoy I, Mike Tirico a little bit. Is that weird? No, Mike Tirico is very good, actually. He is right. Yeah, what the problem is, he's never paired with someone who really suits his uh, suits his style so well. Because you've got uh, uh, the maniac himself, Chucky, right. always calling games with him, and Ron Jaworski. Uh, not anymore, though. Who? Well, who? Well, he didn't do the 2012 season, no, but no. prior to yes, up of to course. 2011, who used to just fill a room with many more words than I. And as it is, I'm a chatty Cathy. That's uh, that was the problem. So that Jaws and, and 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 Gruden were always trying to talk louder than the other one. Right. Uh, it actually. Uh, Gruden's a little bit too uh, a little bit too energetic for me, but I, mm-hmm. I he does break down plays well, you know. And I think it's just our nature as fans to be more critical than we need to be, but because we we get so used to talking about these guys, I'm not mm-hmm. sick of this guy. He's actually doing a pretty good job. He is. I think maybe if I could take Tarico, who has blossomed into one of my favorite football play-by-play guys, and marry him to Collinsworth, because Al Michaels I think has mm. lost a little bit off I, the fastball. I would agree. I would agree. Maybe that's like the super team. I yeah. We, we can we can hold our. Hold our fingers one crossed. Day. And one day. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, well, that'll have to be another day because we're out of time. Just like that? Just like that. Get out. It's for real. For 30, real. Whoa, 30, 30 minutes. This turned into a half E plus five. We got a bonus five. Well, we started a little bit late. We did? Yeah. I didn't notice. It's, uh, you know, time flies when we're hanging out together, Nick. Uh, it does. Mm, mm, All right. Mm. I'll get the tequila. You get the mint. And I'll see you at the bro. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have some brojitos. At the... <laughs> Isn't that the w- I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> America, I'm really sorry. Uh, for those of you watching or listening, thank you very much. Check in every Friday afternoon for a new half hour where we talk about stupid stuff, also occasionally sports. You can subscribe on iTunes. You can follow myself, Matt Ufford, at Matt Ufford on Twitter. 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 Twitter is We the- haven't even gotten into the Twitter. You haven't even busted out the second beer yet. Oh, man. I cannot. Uh, why did they give me a job where I speak? Someone's a lightweight. <laughs> yeah, I've had half a beer, and that's it. <laughs> uh, also, follow Nick Stevens on Twitter, at Ahoy Nick Stevens. Ahoy. Ahoy. Uh, until next time, until next Friday, have a great weekend, have a great sports week, and go easy on the booze, folks. Easy there, brojitos. Can't wait to read everyone's favorite, uh, the new horse names, the yep. superheroes and the street foods. Oh, yeah. Drop us comments. We'll see you later. <laughs>